Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hasham Ali Khan. So far, three videos I have completed on supply analysis. This is the fourth video. In the first three videos, I have explained you the meaning of the term supply, law of supply, then determinants of law of supply, then what are the assumptions of law of supply, exceptions of law of supply in the first video. Second video, elasticity of supply, different types of elasticity. Third video, consumer surplus how we can measure consumer surplus and what are the criticism against consumer surplus all these things I have explained in three videos now in this video I am going to explain you about utility what is the meaning of the term utility what is cardinal utility and ordinal utility so watch the video till the end to get the complete grasp on the topic of supply analysis if you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject business economics, select the videos of supply analysis, be perfect on the concept so that you can confidently write in examination. So before starting the concept of utility, take the screenshot of the points which I have written, then I'll explain in detail. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about meaning of the term utility. Utility means the satisfaction which a person will get by consuming the goods. Because human wants are unlimited. We have to satisfy our human wants by consuming the goods. So by consuming the goods, we will get some satisfaction. That satisfaction is called utility. So in simple words, we can say utility is a psychological feeling. Psychological feeling of satisfaction and is subjective. Subjective means it differs from person to person. That means the satisfaction we can feel, but we cannot measure the satisfaction. So it is simply a psychological feeling of being satisfied by consuming the goods. Now it means the same thing may yield a different amount of utility to different persons. For example, a glass of water will give more satisfaction to a person who is very much thirsty. Whereas the same glass of water to another person who is not feeling thirsty will give different satisfaction. So what I want to say is the utility will differ. The same goods will give different utility to different persons. Persons. Now the amount of utility of a person derives from the commodity depends on his desire for it. So how much satisfaction, how much utility a person gets depends on the desire of that good to that person. If the desire is very serious, then definitely the satisfaction will be more. If the desire is not so serious, only small desire is there. He will not get much satisfaction. If the intensity is great, if the desire intensity is great, then large amount of utility. The person will get large amount of utility. If the desire is not intense, only a small desire is there, then he will get less satisfaction, less utility. Alfred Marshall. So Alfred Marshall believed that utility is quantitatively measurable like height, weight, length, temperature, etc. This belief resulted in cardinal utility concept. The old, the old economist Alfred Marshall, he says that utility is measurable. Utility is measurable in specific terms just like we measure the height, the weight, the length, the temperature, all these things are measured in specific terms. Similarly, the utility can also be measured, is a measurable item. Who says this? Alfred Marshall. That's why this leads to the concept of cardinal utility concept. The modern economists hold the view that utility is not quantitatively measurable. 
opposed to the old, opposed to the classical economist. The modern economist says that utility is not measurable. We cannot measure the satisfaction which a person gets by using, by consuming the commodities. Now, it can be expressed ordinarily and relatively. Ordinarily and relatively we can express, but we cannot measure. Just like by consuming a glass of water, I can say that I got a lot of satisfaction. But I cannot measure and say I got 100 units of satisfaction. We cannot say. We can feel. So, uh, according to modern economist, the utility is not measurable. This uh, leads to the ordinal utility concept. So, old classical economist says it's a cardinal utility, whereas modern modern economist says it is ordinary concept, uh, ordinal utility concept, not cardinal. Now. In examination, you may get a question regarding explain the cardinal utility concept and ordinal utility concept. So one by one, in detail, I am going to explain. Now listen carefully here, cardinal utility. Some early psychological experiments on an individual responses to various stimuli, stimuli led to classical and neoclassical economists to believe that utility is measurable and cardinally quantifiable. So what some early psychological psychological experiments were conducted on uh, to see the various stimuli, the response to the various stimuli. So how the people will respond, how the people will respond after consuming a commodity. So they, has, they have made the experiments and found that this utility is measurable, quantifiable. This belief gave rise to the concept of cardinal utility. So what the classical economist and neoclassical economist, they have experimented, they have experimented the, on the response, on the people, how the, I mean, how they get the satisfaction after consuming the goods and they can be able to measure it. And this leads to the concept of cardinal utility. This belief gives rise to the concept of cardinal utility. It implies that utility can be assigned a cardinal number like 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. <coughs> so what the classical and neoclassical economy says, the utility can be measured in terms of numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4. We can say how many units of satisfaction we can get. So. Neoclassical economists build up the theory of consumption on the assumption that utility is cardinally measurable. So after classical economists, the neoclassical economist says that the utility can be measured. Utility can be measured in terms of units. They use the term util, meaning units of utility. So this neoclass, uh, neoclassical economist they have used the unit called util. Util means unit of utility. In terms of utils, they have measured the utility. In their economic analysis, they assumed. The neoclassical economists, they have assumed that one util equals to one unit of money. For example, one unit of money is rupee. One rupee, one util. Two rupee, two util like that they have compared the unit of money to utils secondly that utility of money remains constant that means the importance of money the uh, the i mean attachment of the money will be equal that means money will satisfy everything we can get whatever we like with the help of money so money utility of money remains constant these are the assumptions on the basis of which neoclassical economist says that the utility is measurable and the unit of utility is util. Now, however, it has been realized over time that absolute or cardinal measurement of utility is not possible. Over a period of time, the modern economists realize that it is not easily possible to calculate 
the utility. We cannot measure accurately the utility. We can feel the satisfaction. Difficulties in measuring utility have proved to be insurmountable. Number of difficulties will arise when we try to calculate the satisfaction. So many practical problems will arise. That's what modern economists say. Neither economists nor scientists have succeeded in devising any technique. No economists, no scientists ever can be able to find out a technique to provide, uh, to provide an instrument which measure the utility. So far, the scientists failed. Economists failed to calculate precisely how much satisfaction a person get by consuming the goods. For measurement of feeling of satisfaction, that is utility. Nor could an appropriate measure of unit be devised. Neither we can be able to make the instrument or technique, nor there is a unit of measurement of utility. Numerous factors affect the state of consumer's mood. There are many factors which affect the mood of the consumer, the psychological feeling of the consumer. The mood will not remain same. The same person will get different utility at different point of time from the same goods. So it is highly difficult to measure the utility, which is impossible to derive. Therefore, utility is therefore immeasurable in cardinal terms. The modern economist says it is highly difficult to measure the utility in cardinal terms. Now we'll come to ordinal utility. So remember, cardinal utility means utility is measurable. It was propounded by classical economists and neoclassical economists. But there are a number of drawbacks of this concept of cardinal utility. Now, modern economists, modern economists says that utility is not measurable, immeasurable. So the modern economists have discarded the concept of cardinal utility and have instead employed the concept of ordinal utility. Ordinal utility for analyzing consumer behavior. <clears throat> When you want to analyze the behavior of the consumer, we cannot apply cardinal utility. We cannot measure the satisfaction. That's what modern economy says. And they have given the theory called ordinal utility. The concept of ordinary utility is based on the fact that it may not be possible for consumer to express the utility of a commodity in absolute terms. <clears throat> so what the modern economy says, the people cannot be able to measure exactly how many units of satisfaction they got by consuming the goods. So, but it is always possible for a consumer to tell whether a commodity is more or less or equal useful as compared to another. We have so many commodities. A person can say that A commodity gives more satisfaction than B commodity or A commodity may give less satisfaction than B commodity or he can say A and B both will give equal satisfaction. Like this we can say but we cannot precisely measure in terms of specific units how much satisfaction we get. So ordinal utility says we can give the number only by comparing. By comparison, we can measure the utility. Now, for example, a consumer may not be able to tell that an ice cream gives 5 utils and a chocolate gives 10 utils. For example, ice cream and chocolate. A person cannot say, by consuming ice cream, I will get 5 utils utility. By consuming chocolate, I may get 10 utils. Like this, we cannot say. But what he can say a person, but he or she can always tell whether chocolate gives more or less utility than ice cream. By comparing ice cream with chocolate, a person can say that ice cream may give lesser, I mean satisfaction than chocolate or chocolate may give more satisfaction than ice cream. In this way, we can be able to express our satisfaction. We cannot precisely give a number. 
this assumption forms the basis of ordinal theory of consumer behavior. This is the basis that we are comparing the satisfaction of one commodity with another commodity and express that which commodity gives more satisfaction. That is ordinal concept of utility. While neoclassical economists maintain that cardinal measurement of utility is practically possible and meaningful in consumer analysis, the classical and neoclassical economist they say that utility is measurable, we can quantify, we can measure in terms of cardinal concept. Whereas modern economists maintain that utility being a psychological phenomenon is inherently immeasurable theoretically or conceptually and quantitatively as well. So modern economists says it is simply a psychological feeling of satisfaction. It is immeasurable. It is not measurable whether theoretically or conceptually or practically we cannot be able to measure it. That this, this thinking, this theory is called ordinal concept of utility. Now they also maintain that the concept of ordinal utility is a feasible concept and it meets the conceptual requirement of analyzing the consumer behavior. If we want to analyze the behavior of the consumer, then ordinal concept of utility is much feasible. It is more practical rather than cardinal concept of utility, what this modern economist says. And in the absence of any cardinal measure of utility, we don't have any technique, we don't have any specific apparatus to calculate the satisfaction, to calculate the utility. So in such a circumstance, the ordinal concept of utility is more feasible in order to measure the satisfaction. That's all. So in this video, I have explained you about the concept of utility and what is cardinal concept of utility and what is ordinal concept of utility. So keep watching and enhance your knowledge. Apart from this, I have uploaded so many subjects, videos in the playlist. Visit the playlist and uh, share my channel among your friends, among your group, so that more students can watch the video and enhance the knowledge. Inshallah, we'll continue next concept in the next video.